One of the most important facets of any business is customer service. In business, you are not only selling a product or a service, but an experience. Providing exceptional customer service and developing real relationships with your clients means increased sales, retain customers, new customers via word of mouth, and a positive reputation. You're listening to the Focus on Customer Experience Podcast. Podcast. Benjamin Del Grosso gives you the ins and outs of one of the most underlooked aspects in business today. Improve your customer service and watch your business skyrocket. Two, one. Now, here's your host, Benjamin Del Grosso. Hi, and welcome to the show. Today, we got uh, James Chevret. Uh, he's a friend of mine. He's a professional in the consumer electronics industry. And James, why don't you tell us, you know, who you are, what you do, and, you know, give, give us some. Uh, well, it's been a long road. No, <laughs> no the biggest thing I, I actually uh, tell people I actually came from the tools. Um, like I do, I'm majorly involved in consumer electronics, as you stated, with uh, 12 volts automotive electronics. And I do um, custom install on the home side as well. But the one thing I always, always remember, even when seeing people, is I came from the tools. I came from the truck. You know, and then went on to manufacturing and then I went on to repping and then I went, you know what I mean? So I kind of always try to remember my roots. And I think that's very unique because I meet people who have never, for example, installed before in their lives. And you're trying to sell installation parts or accessories to it. And I'm like, how can you sell something you've never even touched? Yeah, that's true. Yeah, I was just thinking about this when you said that, because you and I met, I think it's like 20 years ago now, because you did tech support for yeah. uh, Auto Start. Yeah. Yeah. yeah I, like, I, I, that's, how, that's how we, yeah. you, know, you know, as as a technician, I would call you and vent and this yeah. guy doesn't know anything. And then yeah. and I call you again. Yeah. And next time's like, James was my hero. <laughs> <laughs> but you know, what's funny is people remember that. From 20 years ago, like I, I was in a uh, on a call in uh, Grand Prairie, Alberta, and a guy goes, James, you, you James from Tech Support, the guy who talked to me like, like two in the morning one time. Oh, you got my business. What are you selling? And it was just like, <laughs> but he remembered that time I saved his bacon. You know what I mean? And I'm with you that you know those are the times that you you needed really help or you needed something taken care of, and you stuck with them. And I can't believe how the dividends is paid out. Yeah, I remember we were working in an install bay once, and I remember we called you, and we were extremely stressed out trying to figure out this auto start module on the manual transmission vehicle. And I remember we were like, grab another module, grab another module. And I remember calling you, oh, these, these modules are all defective. They're garbage. Mm-hmm. And we're just losing our mind. And it was like a Honda Civic manual transmission. And I, and I remember we end up... Uh, inspecting it i think we're like five hours into troubleshooting this thing to find out all it was was a bad pin on the wiring harness and i remember going oh my god and i mean ever since that day if there's something where it's like i've spent five or ten minutes troubleshooting something at that point in time it's like check the pins because of that experience it's like you got to check that now it's it got added in right because why why bother wasting your time on everything and that's the thing like things happen in our lives and it's whether or not you learn from them or whether or not you're going to make a mistake again. Right. (laughs) But you know, on that note nowadays, the biggest change in electronics is smaller, smaller things that get bent. Just like you're saying, excuse me, that get bent or out of shape or a wire breaks. And that really, that really is very relevant even to today. Oh yeah, definitely. So, uh, what was what was your most memorable experience as a customer? <sighs> Years ago, and I will say I was 17. I got into car audio and um, I wanted to do it. Uh, but of course, back then, no one would hire you because you didn't have a ticket. And then a shop actually on Vancouver Island allowed me to actually build all the paneling, but I couldn't do the, the wiring, they said, for warranty. So I got to do all the carpeting in the building and then they would come and then they would hook it up. Uh, And then I went on to actually compete with that car and I actually won trophies. And why I say all that is that, you know, the salesman listened to what I wanted to do, allowed me to do it, found a way to make it work and then ended up winning uh, trophies for it, which led led me to a world championship. And it 
<laughs> all from a guy you know listening to me. And I always remember that that you know it wasn't it wasn't price, it wasn't product. It was hey, I want to do this. Uh, can you can you work with me? And uh, you know, and it worked out in my favor. That's awesome. It's awesome because that's really you know. So were you working for them, or you nope. were like it was your own vehicle? So you did your own installation, and they did wiring. Yep. Yeah. And it was over an hour away, so I'd go to high school. Um, then do that on the weekends and then drive down there, maybe during the day, sneak out a little bit and then, um, get them to wire it all in. Yeah. Yeah. You, you know, uh, I mean, sometimes I, I would say in my business right now, I'm very like, I guess you would call hyper-focused on doing what I want to do. And I'll have people call me and they want me to do an install where I just plug it into the cigarette lighter and, yeah. and I tell them I won't do it. I just won't do it. I'm sorry. You, yeah. you, you called the wrong place. But that's because I'm trying to like really focus on my brand. And I, but what I also do is I want to be the guy. So I tell them, Hey, let me know where you're located. Oh, okay. You're, you're in Coquitlam. Go to this place. Oh, you're in Surrey. Go to this place. You know, this, this yeah. place will probably take care of you. So what I'm also doing is I want to make sure that I'm providing them a solution. They just still, they still reached out to me. A lot of these people watch even my YouTube videos and they're learning information, mm -hmm. but my brand is all about hiding the wires and having it hardwired in some way. So uh, whether that, so yeah, I mean, I, I, I can definitely appreciate that, that they're willing to work with you. And, and like I was telling you yesterday, I, you know, I had a client that chose to go with me just because his son wanted to see how it was done yeah. mm -hmm. and wanted to watch me. And I said, sure. Yeah. And, and I even got him to do some of the wiring, like here, this is how you do it. Go in there. He yeah. got in the vehicle and he, yeah. and he's doing it. And he goes, and I, and I asked him, was this easier or harder than you thought it was? He goes, well, it looks easier. And I'm like, why does it look easier? He goes, it looks easier because you're making it look easy. <laughs> because in yeah. his head, and the way a lot of other customers said, he thought he had to actually take the whole headliner, drop it down, and run the uh, wire through the whole center of the vehicle. And when I showed him how to do it, he was like, wow, I just didn't know. But he has a natural... Um, interest in mechanics and his dad's like hey maybe you can get him to work for you on weekends or something like, a possibility it's a possibility yeah. right but it was but, good because i was willing to work with him right and but those are the little things that make the customer experience memorable and and people forget that if, it, if it's all going to be transactional you know amazon's going to win you know just like you're saying you know what if there's a, a plug and play cigarette y connector for powering your cameras you know you're saying you know what it's probably going to come out some person's probably going to invent it but that's not my brand so it's great for you for even recognizing that oh yeah definitely well um when you look around at the world today what has stood out to you as the biggest change in how we interact as customers um, i think it's expectation you know back in the day you know um you know, you come in, hey, I, I want a new barbecue. You know, they look, there's five models on the floor. You know, hey, you know, this one has this feature, this has this feature. Which one would you like, sir? Oh, yeah, I got three in the back. You know, oh, can you deliver on the weekend? Oh, yeah, no problem, sir. Well, those days are, are, are gone. Uh, I mean, the, this last two years, supply chain, and I'm not talking to anyone who doesn't know what I'm talking about right now. And also... <clears throat> The internet too, I hate to say it because they might say, well, there's only five models of a barbecue in this example, but there might be 10. Oh, well, what, what about number nine? Oh, we don't stock that one. Oh, but I want the rear broiler feature that makes it pink on the back and not in the front. I don't know. You know what I mean? Like, <laughs> and, and they're like, well, can you get it? And it's like, well, no. Well, who else can get it? You, you know what I mean? Like before, like, you know, hey, I have a bad tail light. Can you fix my tail light? Yes, I can, sir. It'll be this. Okay, thanks. Can I have it done by the end of the day? Yep, sounds great. You know, boom. It's not that easy anymore with anything. You know, you, we laugh about, you know, even, even stapler scissors. I mean, I don't know if you've ever gone to look at crayons at Staples for, for your child. I mean, how many different crayons could there be? I just want to buy a pack of crayons, you know, but the expectation of me just going in, finding a box of 20 crayons and leaving you know, and then you got to go find someone. Oh yeah. Well, can you look online, sir, if we don't have, like it just, it just people's expectations have changed so much, but everyone's expectations are very different. Just like you're saying with your dash camera, 
And, you know, some people want to be called 10 times. Some people want to be texted. Some people want to be emailed. Some people want to be phoned. Some people do not want to be talked to. That's what I mean by all these expectations of some part of the sale. It's, it's different. Like if I ever thought I was a rep, I have a list of who I can text, who I can email and who I have to phone. And, and that's just weird to me because back in the day, you just picked up the phone and you call people. Yeah. It's good. Was it, yeah. We all communicate differently, right? Yeah. We were all, we've all gotten used to different technologies now, right? Yeah. Yeah. Oh. Business over Facebook still blows me away. Still blows me away. You know, but they're like, hey, I saw your post, man. Hey, I was thinking about you. Can I get a dash cam on the weekend? Yeah, sounds great. Okay, how about Thursday? Okay, good. And then, and then you're like, oh, wow, geez, it's, it's on my calendar. Where was it? I know, oh, it's on Facebook. Remember we were in the mall? <laughs> you know? Oh, yeah. It's like, mm-hmm. I actually, I had that exact challenge. Uh, one of my orders, I go, hey, why are they charging me this much? Because it was like a 30, 60, 90 day term kind of thing, right? Yeah. yeah. Like, uh, it's out this amount of money. And then, uh, you know, the rep's like, well, you, you didn't you didn't send me those pictures and serial numbers and stuff you asked for, for the price protection. And I go, yeah, I did. And he goes, where'd you send it? And he looks, Oh, you're right. You sent it over text. He goes, that's the problem of doing business over text, <laughs> email and phone. Yeah. Right. And I go, well, you know, you, you told me just to text it to you. He goes, yeah, I did too that day. Didn't I? He's like, ah, sorry, man. You like, it, it is what it is. They got it fixed. It's not a big deal, but yeah. that's the thing at the end of the day. Um, you know, we, we're all communicating differently and to kind of touch on the whole supply chain thing. Um, and, and you're, you're well aware of this as well, but just for our viewers, uh, a lot of these businesses have ran for a very long time on just in time inventory. Oh, right. So, oh. you know, and, and I can speak for this because, uh, you know, a lot of these companies have big warehouses, you know, in BC and what will happen is you go, somebody comes up to your store and you go, yeah. yeah, okay, no problem. Yeah, I can sell you this, 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 and that. They have it in stock. They sell it. And then they drive to the warehouse and pick it up. Those days are almost gone, okay, yeah. right yeah. now. Um, the, these uh, distributors need to run with probably close to six months of inventory now. A retailer needs to run with probably three months of protected mm-hmm. inventory now. Yeah. While in the past, you could run with, six or 12 turns of inventory to kind of to kind of give you that without confusing everybody on the phone uh, or that's listening right now you could order maybe a month's worth of inventory and then you could just order again at the end of the month and it wouldn't be a big deal you yeah. can't run like that in the electronic space anymore if you do you may risk not being in business you know i have um a gentleman friend of mine who does uh, morant's denon very notable names for even people not in the industry and you know they're going uh nine months before you get product can you imagine building a house and you did all the installation you did everything and the one thing to get your final bill is a receiver and they can't get it you know and then and just like you're saying retailers are used to going to say a local distributor and going oh i'll go pick one up hey uh which ones do you have on the shelf there oh, i'll just grab that one that one's good and you're like no bud if you're not in the queue you're not getting them. And I, I still, I, I, even on the other side, I get people, hey, like we do GVC projectors. I uh, was one model not coming in until June. People call me, oh, hey, man, how about I, I prepay it, you know, and I'll, I'll do it all and you can move me to the head of the line. It's like, bud, it doesn't work that way. You know what I mean? I have nine coming in. It's on this date, this date, this date. This is who's getting them. They've been waiting. Oh, okay, well, call me when one comes in. Well, no offense, you're back of the bus. And I still can't believe people, you know, two years into this and they're still thinking, just like you're saying, oh, I'm going to go down. Like, you know, it's not like you're going to go buy even light switches. You laugh, guys. Um, if you heard like uh, we're both uh, different worlds, but um, fuses for a fuse box, you know, you go chunk, chunk. the world ran out of them. So like there's apartment buildings that they can't get occupancy because they just don't have fuses. Everything else is done. Whole house sealed everything. And then um, I was with one guy and they're on their phones and they're going uh, home hardware in Omaha buying, you know, four. Then they're going, oh, Tacoma. Oh, I can get two. Oh, Phoenix. And I'm like, you can't be serious. And he goes, yeah, 300 uh, unit apartment building. You can't get occupancy. And, and by the way, you can't like just fill a 50 of them. No, it has to be completely signed off. All 300. And this is what's happening. And I don't want to do doom and gloom, but I just think, you know, we can all work with each other and find solutions to all these things. 
but the communication and the expectation are two different things right now on well, what people can do. They had a, I was listening to uh, Joe Rogan had on the national mm-hmm. security advisor yeah. under Donald Trump. Yeah. That was actually a pretty good listen. And uh, they're supposed to, I, I don't know if they did, cause I don't really pay attention to the U S politics at all, but uh, they were supposed to sign off on something to push manufacturing back to the United States. Yeah. Like uh, I guess Samsung is even uh, going to be making chips in Texas. Like that's supposed awesome. to happen like this year. So they're going to start bringing yeah. a lot of stuff back to the United States because what's happened is we're, we're depending on the supply chain uh, from China or, or Japan or Korea. Yeah. And what's happening is because uh, cruise uh, cruise ships, uh, uh, you know, um, all these ships that are coming and bringing cargo across mm-hmm. the water, yeah. you know, the con- cost of a container has gone up like three times in price, oh, yeah. right? Cost Even for more. shipping's gone up. So all those things are being passed on to consumer. Well, you know, it's not worthwhile even getting it made over there. The other thing is, is let's say we're getting chips made and let's say there's, I don't know, 1 million chips being made a day. Well, guess what? Who are they going to take care of? Are they going to take care of their own people first or people in other countries? So we're not at the top of the list and people kind of need to understand that, right? And Mm -hmm. so, I mean, you kind of you want to look at someone like an Apple who's getting their product manufactured over there. It's in their benefit because Apple is supporting jobs in that country. Whoa, sorry. And uh, so that, that is a, that is a good thing right now, obviously, but it will be interesting to see what happens um, as manufacturing comes back. But they also said it's about a six year process yes. yep. to get that. It's not like overnight. So, but this is, this is because we've been reliable on just in time inventory and now we need to bulk up. We need to run differently um, than we ever had before. So it's and also uh, d- domestically, people don't realize that Canada post actually owns pure later. So those are kind of the two big hitters for shipping. And the person who's benefiting right now through all that is the government. And I'm not here to put a tinfoil hide on, but it's really something to think about when they're saying, well, shipping rates have gone up by 50%. And the government goes, well, we're making 50% more money. They don't look at it that way where, you know, our consumers, just like you're saying, is, is you know, the, the, the people or the families are paying the 20, 30% more in some things. I mean, I don't know if you noticed, like milk went up by 35 cents. That actually equated to 26% increase on milk. 26%. If I increased my prices 26%, or imagine you did, imagine the pitchforks that would come out. Oh, yeah. No, and I'm hearing from some companies I'm doing business with that there, there may be increases too, right? But but nothing's guaranteed, you know, yeah. but they're talking. But th- that's the problem right now is, is all these products are being affected by the costs in shipping. Uh, mm-hmm. Cost of manufacturing, plus we have inflation happening. And I mean, I'm not like a master <clears throat> in economics or anything like that, right? Obviously, yeah. but we have to look at all those things. So if we can bring it and at least support jobs locally, you mm-hmm. know, manufacturing, mm-hmm. like I think about when I moved to Ontario, um, I lived there for a while and I remember driving by the big escort radar building yeah. and going, this is awesome. You know, these radar detectors are made in Canada kind of weird that it's made in a province where you can't use radar detectors, but I thought it was pretty cool. <laughs> and then a year later I drive by cause I was going to go, uh, uh, I can't remember. I think, Oh, I was going to pick up some products there. There's a place I get tested tape from. I drive by there and all of a sudden it's like the building's vacant. And I didn't even know yeah. they moved everything to the Philippines. Yep. So now all those jobs in Ontario left to the Philippines. So all these people in Canada yep. for a product that is sold into the North American market. So nobody's uh, and, getting those jobs. And, and consequently now they're moving back because they can't do um, quality and uh, quality control and a bunch of other stuff. So that's a fabulous example of someone had uh, short-term thoughts of, you know, saving some money. And uh, now they're moving back and they're having big problems actually with uh, quality control and uh, manufacturing. Yeah, that's, that'll be interesting. I, I actually didn't yeah. know they were moving it back, but that's because yeah. I haven't really been keeping in touch with the industry at that. Yeah. I mean, uh, just thing hyper focused on what i want to do right so yeah. but um that, that's good news i think because personally mm-hmm. you know if it is mostly sold here it should be manufactured here <laughs> in my opinion in my opinion yeah so but um uh what is one thing you do 
or have done to provide a positive experience? I've reached out to people even on a personal matter. Like, so for example, um, as I was talking about texting or emailing, and I, and I, during all this, I said, Hey, if you had any mental um, or needed help, just bouncing ideas off of business or mental health during the pandemic, uh, please reach out. And um, excuse me, because it was, it was humbling for myself. I sent out about, uh, you know, 200 text messages. I know we can laugh at that or whatever. Right. And they just said, Hey, if, if you need to talk, reach out. And I had three people who reached out to me to send, they were, go- they were thinking about ending their life. Now, I know I'm not trying to bring down the whole thing, okay? But during all this, and we talk about, you know, you're talking about dash cams, I'm talking about receivers, I'm, I'm talking about speakers and car audio, but there's a real human factor to the COVID that I never realized. And so that changed. And I knew the gen- I knew one of the guys for over 20 years. Um, and um, it really changed. The, there's a human side to all of this and to selling and to customers. And, you know, it, it really paid off to me as well as I started paying attention to, to the extras with the business. And it, and it came back twofold, which was nice. It was a great benefit for the business. But actually, I feel better about those people who I kind of helped through consumer electronics. And um, it, it's a different, maybe not the answer you're looking for, but it really no. changed my perspective of all of this. No, but that's showing the human side. And because I really feel you know, the reason why I started this whole podcast was actually the the original idea was, you know what, I'm just going to talk about dash cameras and (laughs) people on from the electronics industry. And then I was like, but I'm going to talk about, you know, what we can do in the industry to give people a good customer experience. Right. And then what ended up happening was I did my first video and, and I was like, wow, nine people watched it. This is amazing. I can't (laughs) believe it. You know, and like, that was, you know, within like 24 or 48 hours. And then I had three people message me, Holy, you're right. You know what? I go to Starbucks. They don't ask my name anymore. And I was like, Oh, you know, and, and, and I've been to probably five Starbucks since I recorded that. And three out of the five places have asked my name. So, but it's that inconsistency. But what, what happened was like, okay, I'm onto something different here. I don't need to talk about what I'm doing. You know what? I need to just talk about the customer experience and, and what yeah. we can do differently. And, it's just about being human. And like, I went into this gas station um, a few weeks ago and, and I don't, obviously I drive an electric car, so I don't get gas, but I went there to get like a lottery ticket Yeah. and I walk in and the guy's not wearing a mask. And I go, Oh, you're not, you're not wearing a mask. He goes, it's your choice. And I was like, Oh, wow. This is, this is awesome. And then the plexiglass divider that they didn't have is gone. And it got me thinking because this was like a couple of days after this was like, I think it was a December 26th or something. I think it went in there. Right. It got me thinking like, this feels almost like the wall. Like it was like when that plexiglass <laughs> barrier went down, it just felt like the wall was yeah. pushed over. And that's how I feel when I go to all these super, like these supermarkets, a lot of them, they don't want to socialize. You can tell, but then there's about 50%. I would say that, that want to chat with you when you're at the till, but they can't because there's this big plexiglass yeah. wall. So I just, or you're doing this, right? How are you doing? Oh, good. Oh, yeah. Oh. That's the worst. Because you know? <laughs> between the mask and the plexi, right? You can't hear them. Oh. And, and I think that's the big thing is just to take that second and see how you're doing. Like, I, I, I keep notes on my clients, but usually I don't have to. But I have one right now. I was waiting for a dog from Mexico. Their family dog died. They're just um, his husband and wife. Uh, they're great people. They don't have any kids and dogs are a big deal. And it's been postponed every Monday. So what's the countdown for the dog? It doesn't take me long. I actually do genuinely care, but I think it's important. I reach out and say, how's the dog coming? How's the countdown coming? You know what I mean? And then also like even when it goes to sales, then it's like, okay, well, first off, how's your dog? Oh, good. All right, all right. Okay. I guess I have to do something, but then it just gets a conversation going too. And it doesn't make them feel like, um, you know, a male champ email. Because that's the world everyone wants us to push. Oh, it's about numbers, about reaching, blah, blah, blah. Yeah, I don't yeah. think you're going to make good money unless you get the human factor. I got, I, I had a CRM and I killed it. I, I honestly, I used it for three, four months and I had it all yeah. like someone would fill out a form and it would text and email them and everything. Yeah. Like it was just filled with all this information. I thought it was so cool. But then 
I, you know, I started realizing that all I'm doing is trying to sell stuff. And that, that was like the first four, yeah. five, six months kind of like realized, Hey, all I'm yeah. doing is trying to push product, right. Push it onto the people. And I started realizing, you know what, we need to, we need to start educating people. You need to interact with them because consumers will tell you what they want and, and they will, they will make it very clear. And if, if you're willing to listen, and I think that's the big problem is a lot of people are more concerned about uh, moving a product than actually listening to the consumers and, and communicating. Um, and yeah, I just, I don't know. Uh, I think, I think it's great. You, you got to listen to everybody. You got to talk to them. I mean, to kind of give you an example on Sunday, mm-hmm. well, this obviously will air in a few weeks, but I, I was doing this install for this guy. This guy got his brand new vehicle on Saturday and I, I'm doing this install and um, I'm taking a, a panel off and it cracks. And I felt like such a bag <laughs> of crap. Right. And because it's a brand new vehicle, you just got it. And, and, and I'm thinking like, great, like all rapport is gone. Right. That, that's, like, that's the first thing going through my head. I mean, I know I'm going to buy him a new panel. It was 40 bucks. I already ordered it. It's going to take about one to two weeks to get here, whatever. Right. But um Anyways, he's like, don't worry about it. It's not a big deal. He goes, um, you know what? I work at Apple. We make mistakes too. We're not perfect. We're human. I'm in mm-hmm. retail. I totally understand. He goes, yeah, yeah you're going you're gonna to take care of it. I trust you. He goes, I watch your YouTube videos. So, you know, I totally trust you. You're, you're very, you know, in touch with humans. He goes, I, I, I'm not worried. I was like, that's awesome. Cool. Uh, but, you know, it could go either way. <laughs> You know well, you know, I mean? you know, what's funny on that is that um, on a panel, just, and this is when I was, <clears throat> excuse me, like 21. And I was a big, you know, I broke a panel. I'd go tell a customer, hey, I broke a panel. Hey, I've already called Chevy. You know, it's $27. Um, it'll be here on Thursday. When it comes in, I'll call you and I'll reinstall the panel. And the boss I worked for said, what are you doing? You don't do that. And I'm like, well, why? And he goes, because now that person is looking at every panel, seeing if you scratched it or broke it. And they're going to say, oh, you did that one. You did that one. You did that one. And I'm like, that's a pretty morbid way to look at it. But what do you do? It's a, it's a boss. And he goes, what you do is you say nothing. And then they come in and go, this panel is broken. You go, I can't believe that happened. You know what? I'm going to take care of it right away, sir. Tell you what, I'm going to phone Chevy right now and order you a new part, blah, blah, blah. <clears throat> and I'm like, that's almost underhanded. But was he wrong or was he right? It's not my way. I'm not, I'm with you. I would admit it right away. Hey, you know what? This oh, happens. Yeah. Like anytime I work on a new car now, I say, look, you're going to need a new clip. They're going to break. Okay. You have to budget 40 to 80 bucks just in clips. And I go, that's how the world works now with what, you know, it's how it is. And, you know, um, but it's just like you're saying, how you do that customer experience. He'd rather get someone mad, comes in and diffuses them than get out in front of it. And he was yeah. a successful businessman too. It just, it's funny you said about a panel because I, I still remember that from way back when. Yeah, it's it's a lot better to be transparent because then they, uh, to me, my personal opinion, if someone said, hey, I accidentally broke this panel, I would think, okay, they're being honest because yeah. you know what? They easily could have not told me that they broke anything. And yeah. to me, if I found something broken and they didn't tell me about it, now I would actually start <laughs> questioning what else did they break? Yeah. That's my opinion, right? I would find yeah. it hard to trust them. So, but hey, you know what? Everybody's different, but we also know like the human psyche, you know, we all think differently, right? So yes. yeah. you might have, I think you'd have less than 5% of people that would actually be like, what else did you break? I think yeah. most people would be happy that you told them and that you're going to take care of them, but there might be a few people that might question it and that's fine. And you know why usually that, why they've questioned it? It's because usually they've been screwed by someone else <laughs> before. Yeah, yeah. That's exactly yeah. why. It has nothing to do with whether you were right or wrong. It has everything to do with the fact that someone else screwed them in the past. And, yeah. and I'll be honest, like early on in my business, I had a lot of people screw me. And, yeah. and because of that, when I was going to hire anybody else to do anything, I was so overly cautious. <laughs> and, and then I had someone say to me, why are you treating everybody like that person who screwed you? Yeah. I said, well, and I said, they, they go, it's not right. And I go, you know what? I actually do agree with you, but it's also the same time. It's, it's the business's money. And when you've already been screwed for, let's call it $15,000, yeah. 
Yeah. You know, and you're going to invest four or five grand in some other guy to do something for you. I don't want to just burn four or five grand. Yeah. Well, you're, you, you just get cynical just the way it is. Right. You know what right? I mean? So, but, um, let's, uh, it, it, let's, let's switch gears here a little, uh, uh no problem. Man. Is there, is there a book you've read that has influenced your life? Yes. There's two, two books. Here comes the cliche. Everyone ready for it? Yeah. Start with why. Um, reason is though, is not that it changed, um, my life, uh, but I never knew why I liked um, being a rep, for example, why I liked working for tech support. I, I enjoy um, I enjoy helping people grow their businesses and I enjoy solving problems and then having a, a positive outcome. And this book made me go, you know what, that's why I do what I do. I never knew why, and that's part of the pun there, but I thought it was pretty interesting on why do you like to see people like, I like seeing people. I like people's energy. I like mannerisms. I like talking to them. I admit it. Okay. Um, I'm not one to sit behind a desk. Mm -hmm. Like, yeah, I hate spreadsheets. Do they have a place in business? Yes, but I hate them. But this one really made me go, Hmm, you know, um, why do you do it? And then you have to sit down and go, geez, I don't know. And then I'm like, wow, you know what? I want to make people fall in love with sound again. And I go, why? Because I remember, Okay, dating myself, summer of 1992 when the Black Crows album came out. And I remember cruising with my buddies, sitting with the girls, having a beer with it. And man, and I just, and you think about high school uh, dances, that one song used to be, remember the slow song was Stairway to Heaven. And it was like nine minutes, you could slow dance with a girl for nine minutes. You know what I mean? Like, and I see, I can, I can still feel it. You know, my hair is going, woo! Because most things we remember have sound. And, and we forget that. Like, it's usually, well, I say it was a sunset. Well, I guess it was a sunset. Or, oh, wow, the water was very blue in the Caribbean. But you know, what you probably remember more is the waves crashing, the wind blowing. You know what I mean? Or you might say, oh, there was this song when I took my uh, significant other out for the first time. Or, hey, you know, you know what I mean? Like, that's what, and that's why I like it. I, I admit it. And the, that book made me go, why? I never thought of it. I just love music. And yeah. I thought just because with the emotion that it creates for people is amazing. And the other one I do like is uh, the G code by Ryan Stuman. And uh, one of the big things of that one that I do like was taking the time every morning to be thankful. And uh, you know, we, it's so easy to get up, especially this day and age, walk out with your coffee, have your jammy bottoms on, start your day and you have all the crap or you're not enthusiastic because the world we live in, and that, that one said, you know, name five things every day when you get out of bed that you're grateful for. And like one, you know, I, I never thought of is I, I have a home. Yeah, I, I have uh, my kids can go to school. Like one of them for myself was I'm, I'm active in martial arts. And I'm like, I can I can actually go to judo now or I can go to jujitsu now because the, when the pandemic was lifted, I mean, we're still here. OK, but like you, you, you realize that these little things actually are huge, like. You know, it sounds weird, you know, and I wouldn't tell her to my face, but it was like, you know, I woke up next to my wife. You know, I'm not used to not going through the pandemic alone, you know, and you can call me foo-foo or whatever for that comment. But that's what that book showed me, the G-code. And I, I really liked it that every day you, you, you write down five things that you're thankful for. And I, I think it was huge. Yeah. So with what you were talking about, how you your start with why the Simon Sinek book and um, so I had a friend recently who um, she worked in retail for a long time, worked yeah. in retail. Right. And I can tell she's kind of a social butterfly. She likes talking to everybody. And then she gets offered that she, she wants to move on. Right. And she wants to take this job on as in distribution, working for a distribution company. Mm -hmm. And I'm like, and I could tell how she was and I could, and, and I knew of the company she was going to go work for. And I was like, are you sure you want to do that? <laughs> right. And, and I didn't want to tell her like the company was bad. Cause I don't think the company was bad, but I could tell like how she likes talking to people didn't make sense. So then it got to the point where she now got transitioned out of her training into working at home. Right. Yeah. And yeah. then she's like, I hate this job. So like for a month, I got to listen to her. Like, I hate this job. I hate this job. 
And, and I go, I knew you would. And she goes, well, why, why didn't you tell me? And I'm like, well, cause you have to make decisions on your own. I can't make your decisions for you in your life. Like, you know, I'm just like, I'm just a friend of yours. Right. So, you know, and now she took a job where she'll be in an office. She'll get to talk to lots of people frequently. It's close to her home. And I think that's a way better environment for her because she wants to be in a position where she can talk to people, have the water cooler conversation. Well, um, a friend of mine, right? uh, Oh, the same thing. And he summed it up as the culture. He goes, you're not bad. The company is not bad. It just means the culture of that company is just different. And either you fit into that culture or you don't fit into that culture. And like you said, one could be, you know, chit chatty, blah, blah, in front of people. And one can be very spreadsheet driven. You, you know what I mean? And uh, no, that just sounds exactly like that. Your friend's experience. Yeah. Um, if there's one thing you could change in the entire world today, what would it be and why? You, you're going to laugh, but most people don't know that China, their shipping is subsidized by their government. That's why when you go to eBay or whatever, and it's like says $3 shipping or a buck shipping. Okay. So us in North America can't compete with that. So I actually think that our government should subsidize our shipping or tariff the heck out of their shipping to make it an even playing field for businesses in North America. And I know it's not like uh, something revolutionary, but <clears throat> it's like you were saying about chips. You know what I mean? If you can buy a thousand chips and they, they get it here for free shipping here, it costs a thousand dollars. Which one are you going to go with? And yeah, it's an extreme ex example, but I, I think we should, instead of tar uh, tariffing products, we should be tariffing their shipping because that would make it a lot more of an even playing field. If you're shipping a dinette set from China, it's 20 bucks from them. It's 400 domestically. It should be 400 domestically for China to get here or even more because, Hey, they're bringing it in. And I just think shipping is the one instead of looking at prices and tariffs, I think cost of shipping should be looked at. Yeah. Cause like recently I ordered something I paid for express shipping it's supposed to be here for Christmas. They, they say they're a company in the States. Yeah. I got it like two weeks ago. Yeah. It didn't even come yeah, close I, to that. And and then it shipped from China. They they told me it was shipping from the States. They completely lied to me. Yep. And it was terrible customer service. And then the things broke within 24 hours of having them. One yeah, was no, out of the box. It was just terrible. But I mean, the, to kind of, you know, backtrack. But yeah, I mean, the shipping for express shipping was like $5.99. Yeah, that's what I mean. Like, it doesn't get here in time, but there's no way like we could compete on five ninety nine express shipping. We can't even send a birthday card for five ninety nine. Yeah. Oh yeah. You look at Canada <laughs> Post. Everything. Then, right? You know what I mean? And that's what I. That's that's just personally. I just think that would be a way better plan of attack that would change the life of everyone. Because like you're saying, is if the, the shipping is so early on in the supply chain that the the costs get carried on, carried on, carrying on, so that. 100 bucks is now 150 to the consumer by the time it touches hands through distribution and taxes and blah, blah, blah. And I just really think that um, the government should really try and help us or look with shipping. I, I truly do. Yeah. I mean, I don't think it's illegitimate. I mean, they, you know, they got their hands in Perlator and Canada Post. So it's not like they can't find a way amazing, to subsidize isn't it, it yeah. right? <laughs> yeah. You know, that's the thing. But uh, I mean, I can firsthand talk about shipping stuff to the States. Normally I'd pay 20 to 30 bucks to ship a box. And during December, it all of a sudden went up to like 35 to 50 bucks to ship yep. one box. I'm going, there's like, you know, there's not even this much profit. Like there was one that well, I shipped and it, they did like a recalculation on weight and charged yeah. me like $59 to ship a six by six by six box. I'm and, like, and, what the heck? Like this is and a as a business owner. That you and let's face it, okay. I know everyone. We're in, we're in business to make profit. We're in business to make some markup, and the people think you know that little widget. We're making three four hundred percent on it. We're not like most margins, and even is thirty percent. You know, and I said, and you you have a shipping increase of twenty five. Suddenly, you're working for nothing, and the truth. But you you're only at least it's you. But imagine like you're not paying someone $25 an hour to package that. Like those are the things that kill businesses. And, you know, when you're, you're shipping went up 25% in December and you didn't really know until it's already left. Oh, That's yeah. It's not even fair to, to try and, and ask them to absorb it. 
Well, so you kind of give you an idea. So this item sold for 180 bucks. Yeah. It cost me $28 to ship it. That was the original quote that I paid and it was using Perlator. Mm -hmm. Uh, Plus on top of that, there's, you know, debit, Visa, MasterCard fees, but there's a financing that we offer on the website, which cost me about 6%. So 6%, 180, you do the math. It's about 10, 11 bucks. So now you're, you're what is that? 40 bucks gone. Yeah. This product, just to be straight up honest, we make $3 off of after all that. And, but that's fine. Uh, It wasn't about the fact that I made $3 you know what? I still answer the phone, still talk to this customer, yeah. treat them the same as every other customer. Because you know what? Sometimes you make three bucks. Sometimes you make, you know, a hundred, two hundred dollars $200, but you don't know. It, it is what it is. It's playing the averages is the way I've always looked at it. And I want to give every customer the same experience. That way, yes. if you have a positive experience, then that, that customer gave me a Google review, gave me a five-star review, was completely happy with everything I did. And then an adjustment came in where they're now charging me $58 for that product it shipped. And that was shipped within Canada, a yeah. six by six by six box. And so I'm still going back and forth. I'm going, listen, it's just the premise that, you know, if you wanted to adjust it two, three bucks due to like fuel surcharges and stuff, yeah, yeah, yeah. I get it. Yeah, get yeah. It. But they're trying to say that, that it weighed 19 pounds. This dash cam weighs 1.3 pounds in the box. Like it weighs nothing. It doesn't That's a lot of stuffing. Pounds. So somebody did something wrong on a scale somewhere and made a mistake. And I've, it's already been a back and forth arguing for a month. Well, not arguing. It's just, uh, you know, emails back and forth. Right. But yeah, why should it cost that much to ship a six by six by six box in Canada? Like it just doesn't even make sense. No, and, bucks, uh, in my opinion <laughs> and the sad thing is is like what i what I, I i used to saw a lot on like you're saying on that and i would take a picture with the box on it with their thing on their scale and take a picture but but why should i have to do that as a consumer too do you know what i mean like i hate when i'm guilty till i prove myself innocent with these sort of things and unfortunately like you know you're arguing with the government i hate to say it you know what i mean and it, you know 19 pounds for a dash cam. I mean, that would even, even if you logically thought, how could that hang from someone's windshield? I'm just saying. <laughs> with, you know with what I mean? 3M tape, James. Yeah. <laughs> industrial. <laughs> industrial. Hook and, was it, what it used to be? Uh, hook and loop. Industrial strength glue. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Like, I mean, yeah. But, and like I said, but the customer experience, it makes you doubt them, right? Just because that change. You could, like you said, you're, you're a reasonable person. I'll give them five bucks. Okay. I get it. Okay. It's a little bit heavier, a surcharge or whatever, but then they're arguing with you over 50 bucks. Are you, that means you now are be looking for alternative for shipping. So there's no doubt in my mind. I'm going to give you an example of, of how shipping is so messed up. And I guarantee you've probably done the same thing as me at least once. And so it was the point where, you know, Christmas in 2020, we'd ship stuff off. Right. And, I gave my wife like, man, we just paid like $50 to ship all that stuff to Edmonton. Like, why would you do that? And she's yeah. like, well, you know, uh, we had to ship it to my parents. I'm like, okay, but I can go on Amazon, buy it for the exact same price in the store and they'll ship it to their house for free. <laughs> it costs <laughs> yeah. me nothing. Yeah. So, yeah. so, and I, it's not like I want to support Amazon, but why is it going to cost me 50 bucks to ship this small box to Edmonton, you know, when I can ship it all for free via Amazon. So then Amazon just keeps winning. Right. You know, and so how would, you know, as much as I want to support small business, they're not given an even playing field. Well, my mom uh, said to me years ago, pigs get fat, hogs get slaughtered. And it's exactly what's happening. Right. There's gouging going on somewhere. And like, and I agree with you. If you want my, I have, I have three children. My, my mom lives on the Island, same thing. And it kills her just to pay, you know, $30 to ship or something. So even they go to me, can you go down the road and you go buy it? And then I say, it's from Nana and it saves her $30, which is $90 with three kids or exactly what you're saying. She Amazons it and does the ship too. And it's free. So, I mean, there's going to have to be fundamental changes and it all seems to revolve around shipping. To, to be honest with you, like to go back to your original question, it all seems to come from shipping. Yeah, no, I, I totally agree with what you're saying. And yeah, I mean, yeah. not even just with China, but with overall shipping yeah. 
in general, I mean, they're, they're increasing rates. I'm watching rates increase and I, yeah. Anyways, we could go on for about shipping. Oh, oh yeah. No, no. <laughs> but uh, do you have any uh, final words, final thoughts? Uh, no, just everyone just always have to reevaluate the, the cycle right now with, with selling, um, you know, back in the day, you could say I was, a, you know, a Sony store or as a pioneer store and you brought all your product in for one year. And now, you know, consumers, you know, so what, what doohickey is great. Like, look up here, you know, um, two years ago, like um, ATV audio blew up like thousand percent because people were at home with the pandemic. So you have to be able to pivot. And, you know, and there was Marine Audio this year. It was barbecues and outdoor furniture as well through the pandemic because people were home, uh, backdoor spaces. So if I could just give some, everyone as, as a sales professional is really be ready to pivot and also look what's going on and what people are doing. You know, look at it. We have seen what trailers have done, what, you know, even new cars have done. You know, oh, now i got to find used cars. How am I going to find used cars? So being flexible in sales, I think, is the biggest skill nowadays is being flexible in sales. You can't just do like, I saw this, it's got to be this, this, what's hot right now, what's going on, you know? And, and that's, I think what people have to realize, you know, you can't just sell the same widget all the time, the same way. Yeah. You have to keep changing. You yeah. have to keep changing because, you know, and, and, and this will sound uh, completely monotonous, but you know, doing the same thing over and over again, expecting a different result yeah. Yeah. and I've watched it for so many years at so many places I've worked with and it's like you have to keep changing you have to keep evolving and you know the, the famous thing everybody likes saying is I'm diversifying well <laughs> you know or you know I'm changing it and now I offer like 50 product lines I'm like yeah but how can you be focused on that but it's but but you know going hey I need to go deep in marine audio now because people are buying that like that you need to be reading the market you need to find out what's going on and i totally agree with uh what like what you're talking about instead of just yeah. which means you need to learn it more you need to specialize in it more or the other thing is now is like i, I see right now debate people going well should i buy deep because people have stock well if you sell dash cams and you know there's been a shortage for the last six months and you know you sold x amount of dash cams why not pre-purchase 80% of them now, because then you have a business for the whole year. Like you were saying, just in time inventory, but people, like I asked them, how many head units do you sell? How many amplifiers do you sell? Well, I don't even know. How, okay. You're in the amplifier business. And I would say, Hey, you know, if you sold a hundred last year, you should buy 90 now. Cause you are you going to have do less business. Well, I don't want to do less business. Okay. So what's based it on 90% and actually buy that way. And then you don't have to worry about supply issues, yada, yada, yada. But some people are still debating. It's just like, you know, like, you know, I go back to barbecues because barbecues, everyone kind of understands a barbecue. I mean, if you're, if you're not buying your barbecues for the season, you're just rolling the dice and you're going to have a business. Hmm. Nice. You know? It's awesome. Then, well, I uh, mean. Scare too many people with that thought, but I'm just saying, like, people just have to think that way, you know. I mean, if you sell widgets, you have widgets to sell, yeah, you, you have to pivot, right? And you have to find yeah. ways to have proper stock, um, but you have to keep on, you know, pivoting. And I mean, and maybe it'll be that you're, hey, I got way too much of this, it's not moving that quick this year. Is there other companies that have back orders that would like to take some of my inventory? And that's working together with your. That's yeah. why it's good to have a good relationship yeah. with your sales rep, because a lot of times those sales reps, they don't want to see you sink. They don't want to see you go out of business. You, you've probably had a relationship with them 5, yeah. 10, 15, 20 years yeah. plus. And if, if they know that you're going to, that you can't handle this and you're not going to be able to make your payments, it's be better to move it to someone else who maybe has back orders than, yeah. than to say, Hey, you know what? Sorry, man. Like you ordered it. It's yours. And, yeah, but I've dealt with reps like that over the years that, that aren't willing to work with me. And a lot of times it, it doesn't work out well. And I, I know the company that you work with, we had uh, some challenges yeah. and we said, Hey, listen, like this stuff's just not moving, but we're moving a lot of this. Can we load up on this? Yeah. And, will you willing? and they're like, you know what? No problem. 
we'll work with you. Yeah. Let's make this happen. But that's uh, but I think um, the relationship between distributor or rep and and a business is so important now, especially during um, these times. Because just like you're saying, you know, hey, A has been selling great, B isn't. Hey, can you help us? You know, hey, can you return B for me and get more A's? Or hey, you know, what's coming down? Hey, you know what? Like you're saying that that store. They've been on back order. Hey, they'll buy 20 of your widgets. How's that sound? And I think people might have taken, um, I'll say salespeople collectively, because it can say at any level, um, for granted. But I think now during the pandemic, it is very important to have a very good communication with your sales associate at whatever level that is. Yeah. Oh, that's awesome. Well, I mean, uh, I appreciate you coming on the show today. Oh, Thank you. Actually, it's been actually a lot of fun. Actually, this is wicked. I mean, uh, but um, yeah, thanks a lot. And yeah, maybe we'll do this again here in a year. Try and do some revisits with everybody. That'd be awesome. Thanks again. Thanks. Thanks for listening to the Focus on Customer Experience podcast. 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 Be sure to subscribe wherever you get your podcasts so you never miss an episode. For more information or to connect with Ben, check out Benjamin Del Grosso on LinkedIn at Safe Drive Solutions on Instagram or www.safedrivesolutions.ca online. We'll see you next time.